It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Burlington, Vermont today. We are at the Sanders Institute gathering where so many great uh, politicians, activists, academics are gathered here in order to tackle the critical issues of our times. And we are now being joined by Representative Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii. Thank Aloha. you so much for joining us. <laughs> Aloha. Nice to see you. Tell us about what some of the key challenges are that you're going to be tackling in yeah. the coming year. Uh, well, first of all, it is, um, it's been great over the last few days to welcome a lot of these new members of Congress uh, to Washington. Uh, they've been going through their own orientations, but we've been having time to spend uh, with them as individuals and as groups. And actually just yesterday, um, we got a little inkling of what's to come uh, when there were probably three or three or four of us who uh, are already members of Congress and about five or six of the newly elected members of Congress who will be joining us and being sworn in in January gathering with some amazing young leaders from the Sunrise Movement to talk about a green economy to talk about protecting our environment, the importance of clean air and clean water, uh, and how we really need to focus our attention on investing in this, in this uh, green and sustainable future for us. Are you talking about us. the Green New Deal? The Green New Deal uh, is, is um, the, the, I guess, the, the, at the forefront of what the Sunrise Movement is pushing through. Again, young leaders from across the country who are taking ownership for their future, as well as some of the other pieces of legislation that we um, already have introduced and that this select committee um, will continue to work on building forward to, to actually well, have an actionable plan. What are the components plan. that you think could have life? When you create this select committee, you really start looking at um, taking a comprehensive approach through legislation on how we get our country off of its addiction to fossil fuels and uh, invest in the kinds of infrastructure, jobs, and economy that we need to build this, uh, an economy that's based on green and clean renewable energy. Uh, I've introduced legislation last year called the Off Fossil Fuels Act, working with incredible environmental organizations like uh, Food and Water Watch, uh, we have now, I think, close to 400 environmental nonprofits from across the country who are supporting that legislation. And so that's one element of what they're talking about when they're talking about a Green New Deal is, is building this pathway for a bright future, for a clean future, a sustainable and livable future, uh, not, not just for our generation, but really looking down the line for generations to come and placing this at the forefront uh, as a priority. And so that's something that we talked about earlier today here at the Sanders Gathering is um, understanding that clean air and clean water is the most basic and funda fundamental right that we have as people. And we have to make sure that the leaders of our country are, are forming and enacting policies that not only respect and understand that, but really putting it at the forefront. All right, you're going to get incredible pushback uh, from the Trump administration, as you have been. Um, I mean, he's rolled back so many of the very little Obama was able to advance in terms of climate uh, cr a crisis we are dealing with and trying to tackle it. Um, how do you plan to, uh, I, I guess, push through some of these uh, very good policies? Yeah that the Green New Deal is talking about? Well, I think it's, it's first important to understand that, uh, yes, we have to fight back against these attempts, uh, some successful, some not, to um, take away very, very basic but very important environmental protections that are in place, really to protect mm -hmm. us and our families and our communities. Uh, and so that's kind of the immediate, right, with the situation that we have. But it's important as we look at uh, how to make this very systemic change that we address the systemic problem as well. And I can tell you the systemic problem in Washington is the, um, the influence of big fossil fuel money in Washington and, and how long that has existed. Uh, and it's something that um, exists not just because of Trump. It's been around long before that. And, and, it, and it affects Democrats and Republicans. So I think it is... Um, 
it should be inspiring and I draw hope from the fact that there are more and more people getting involved and getting engaged in this as not a Democrat or Republican issue, but an issue that impacts all of us, regardless of party, regardless of what state we come from, regardless of our race, ethnicity, uh, you know, whether you're wealthy or you're poor, having access to be able to breathe clean air and so that when your children are born, they can take a breath of clean air uh, and make sure that we have clean water, make sure that we have a safe and livable home. These are the things that are common interests for every single person. And so if we are starting that conversation there, yes, with leaders in Washington, but with people across the country who are making decisions about who they're voting for and what kinds of policies they're pushing for, then we have real opportunity to make this kind of big change that needs to happen.